Hey everybody, Nate Chamberlain here demonstrating a solution that you might be able to use that helps to distribute work a little more evenly uh, between people who are responsible for different categories. So I've got a pretty simple request form here in Power Apps uh, that just has a subject where you might say something like the mouse isn't working and then you can give a better description like batteries might be dead. <laughs> And then for our category, it's hardware, and our subcategory is accessories. Okay, then I'm gonna click on submit. There we go, so we submitted our request. And I wanna show you a couple other things involved here. Now, first of all, that uh, request that I just put in there is gonna show up here in a list called support requests. So I'll just refresh here. And there's my mouse isn't working, batteries might be dead, blah, blah, blah. But notice it assigned that request to Grady. Okay, and it was logged by Megan, who is uh, the person I'm pretending to be right now. But how did it assign it to Grady when I didn't enter that? Now it's not a default value like you might be thinking, like priority and status, those are also managed by IT, but they just come in here and manually change those. This assigned to field is actually dynamic and determined by another list. So let's look at that. On my left here, I've got support request categories. This is where IT managers who don't need to know anything about Power Automate or Power Apps uh, can just keep a list of all the categories that IT handles or HR or accounting, whichever department you're working in, all of your request categories and your subcategories. In my case, category is a choice column just to make sure they're consistent. Subcategory is text. They can type in whatever they want there. And then responsible is where they determine no more than two people per subcategory that can handle those requests as they come in. So the one I submitted was a mouse, right? Accessories for hardware. Grady's the only person who can handle that. So I put Grady there, right? Now what happens if I choose something that has two people, Grady and Patty? The way I've set this up, I only want one person handling each request. So let's see what happens. Does it go to Grady or does it go to Patty when it's a laptop request? Back to my form, I submitted another request, and this time it's gonna be my laptop is lost, and my description is gonna be it fell in the water, and my category is still hardware, but my subcategory is laptops. Remember, Grady and Patty handle these. So I click on submit, I go check out my other list with the actual request where those are being logged. Here's my laptop is lost, it fell in the water, and it went to Patty. Interesting. Okay, so Patty was second on the assignment list, right? So let's go back and let's fill out another one. Submit another request and we're gonna say laptop is found description. And I'm just gonna do a weird ticket here and say disregard my last ticket. <laughs> we're gonna say hardware and laptops and submit. So basically the category subcategory was the same. Does this one go to Grady or does it go to Patty? Let's refresh and find out. So this one, laptop is found, which was the same category and subcategory, went to Grady. So it's alternating. It's it's kind of spreading it out a little bit, making sure not, uh, you know, making sure that one person doesn't get everything. So how do we do this? How do we build it? Well, first of all, uh, one reason I chose to use Power Apps as my front end is because I can do cascading dropdowns pretty easily, where I've got my categories like you saw in my list over here. I've got hardware, 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 my three blues as accessories, laptops in general. And software's got four, and I didn't want users to have to choose these in a SharePoint list every time. Because if they do, let me show you the user experience. If they do that, they choose hardware, but then they just type in whatever they want for subcategory. Or I could have made subcategory a choice field, but then they have a bunch of stuff that's irrelevant to you know other categories. So with Power Apps, I can say if they choose software, I only want to see software subcategories. If they choose network, I only want to see network subcategories. So I built this out in Power Apps, and I won't get into the details for that this time, um, but that's why I went this route. Now, the other piece is that in my uh, request categories, I did have to allow multiple select on that person field. So for responsible, if I go to my column settings, you do want to say allow multiple selections in the more options section. That way you can tell your managers that they can put two people, up to two people, in that field for this solution to work. If you do three, whoever you put in the middle is not going to get any assignments. <laughs> so uh, for my solution I said you can put a max of two people in that field and we're going to try to distribute work between the two people per topic. 
All right, now the nice thing about this is your managers can manage this list anytime, and they never have to edit the flow, they never have to edit the Power App, right? They just manage this one thing, and then as requests trickle in, it's referring to this again and again. So if someone were to leave the company, they come here, edit it, take out that person, and maybe put in another one in their place, right? It's pretty simple. And then if someone goes on vacation, let's say Isaiah is going on a week-long vacation, Isaiah can be replaced with someone else during that time, and any requests that come in during his vacation go to that other person, again, without editing the Power App or the Power Automate flow. So let's look at the flow. That's where the real magic happens here. Now in my flow, let me go ahead and edit here. I've got my Power App trigger. So I started this flow um, from Power Apps, just creating it there. And then one important thing you're going to need is an assign to variable. This is how we're going to um, basically assign it to the first or the last person and then assign to column. All right, so initialize a variable. Just add a step that's called initialize variable. Name it v assign to if you want to be like me. And then change your type to string. Don't put anything in the value box. All right, now I'm going to move kind of quickly through this, but you can always pause the video and catch up. So now I'm going to create an item. And in my create item, this is where I did uh, all of my ask Power App steps. So for example, create item title. When you click into one of these fields that's in your request list, like mine here, you just click in and then one of your options when you search your dynamic content is ask in Power Apps. This is how you can, from your Power App, tell Power Automate which values plug into which spots. So uh, whatever someone typed for their title in my request app comes in as the title here. Whatever someone typed as their description comes into my description here for SharePoint. So this is the transfer of those pieces. But notice I also set a default priority value, default status value, and I set the date reported to whatever the timestamp is right now. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, you just click into a field, go to expression, type UTC now, and select that, and click OK. And that just means whatever time it is right now when this is running is going to be set as that date field. Okay, so date reported is right now. All right, and then I've got a few more Ask and Power Apps steps there for the uh, category value and the subcategory. And then you'll notice I have five here, but on my form I only had four fields one, two, three, four. The last one was who submitted the form, and you can get that in Power Apps just by using user. So here, I'll just do it in this random formula bar. But when you type user and then open and close parentheses, you can pull in different details about whoever's filling out uh, the form at that time. So I could say user.email, for example. And then that pulls in whoever's filling it out's email. Back in my flow, I've got a compose step here because for me, I wanted to distribute work better rather than just saying, you know, go to this person all the time. I'm going up to two people in my method. And so I have this formula, and I've got a different video on this if you want to get into details, but I've got a different expression that I wrote here where I'm saying if the ID number of the requests that came in, meaning the SharePoint item that was created as a result of the form being submitted, if that item's ID number is odd, assign it to this person, or if it's even, assign it to the other person. And this works nicely because if there's only one person assigned to a subcategory, it still goes to that person. It doesn't matter through my method. All right, so you can see the, the formula there if you want to copy that down or go ahead and type that in. But the thing that you're going to have to change is the ID field. So just make sure where it starts with outputs and it ends with the ID single quote square bracket. That needs to be your, um, your ID field for your request. Okay, now if you're not sure how to get that, I'll show you real quick. When you fill out your expression, you can say something like if equals mod, so that's kind of how I built mine, and then right where you're putting mod is where you're going to put the uh, field for your ID. So you just click where you want it, go to dynamic content, find that ID field. So let me find mine, there we go. I found it here, and notice it puts it right in there exactly how it's supposed to be written. So outputs create item body ID. Perfect, and then I just finished my expression. So again, I'll show you what that looks like here. There we go, so the body ID, and then divided by two, and if it has a remainder of one, it's odd, otherwise it's even. And again, I have a whole video on that if you wanna get deeper. So I've got odd or even for the request number. 
Now, the next thing I need to do is connect to my categories list where I have the categories, subcategories, and who's responsible for it. Because I need to figure out if someone submits a request where they selected hardware and accessories, I need to know who's responsible for it in that moment in case it changes, right? It's very dynamic. Same with software, if they choose Jira, it has to go to Adele or Megan. So, this get item steps connects to a different list. Same site in my case, but a different list with just the category, subcategory, and assignment. Now, what makes this step work is making sure that you put a filter on there. So make sure you say uh, the category is equal to the category value selected in the Power App. Now, this is showing SharePoint because I'm using the create item. You can see in the tooltip there, this category value comes from whatever is put into the SharePoint item in the request list. So the category of the categories list must be what was selected in the Power App. And the title, which in my categories list is actually the subcategory, must equal whatever is selected as the subcategory in the Power App. Okay. Now, the reason it says title instead of subcategory here is because uh, the title was the default field that came with my list, and I renamed it to subcategory. But on the back end, that field is still called title. So go to your list settings and select your column name if you're having an issue here. Uh, and when you look in the URL, it'll tell you the name of the field that you should be using here. Okay, I'll go ahead and show you that. So if I go to my list and I go to its list settings, I'll just pick on category and we'll look up in the formula or the URL here and notice field equals category. So that's how I know what to put here in my power app category right there. Okay, or title is what I would have gotten from the URL for subcategory. So we keep moving on, and then now inside of an apply to each, I'm saying basically anything that it found from that filter query for that list, so this is the value from the get item step, right? I'm going to get that item, which there should only be one, there should only be one category, subcategory pair, okay? And I'm going to get that ID to get more details about it, because this is one way that I have to get the responsible field that we're going to use here in a moment. Then I go to my condition, and whatever the outputs were from this compose step, which is my odd even determination, whatever the output was there, if that equals even, then I'm going to assign it to this person. Or if it's odd or anything else, it goes to this other person. Now this is probably one of the most important parts of this whole process here, where if you look at that formula there, in my expression I'm saying it's the first person who is listed as responsible. Okay. And I did that just like I showed you before, where you type most of the formula, so in this case, really just first, open parentheses, and then use your dynamic content and select your assigned to field or your responsible field from that categories list. Okay, and actually I'll just uh, rebuild this one real quick so you can see it, it's not hard. You click into the value field, go to expression, and then I type in first, open my parentheses, and then I go to my dynamic content, and I find my responsible, there we go. And then the most important part here on this and the next variable, because they're very similar, is at the very end, after the word responsible or assigned to or whatever your field name is before that single quote, put a hash symbol and then put the word claims. That means that we're just going to take the claims from that whole responsible field. That's all we want is just the claims. Okay, so we click on OK. You can copy and paste that if you want to make this next part easier. So there we go, we've got our first, I'll double check on the highlight there, we can see that it's hashtag claims. And then for last, on the other side, notice it's, it's the exact same formula, except instead of the word first, use the word last. Okay, and we still do the hash claims right before that last single quote to make sure that's all we pull out of that responsible or assigned to person field. Okay. So on the left, the first means the first person listed in the field, and the last means, of course, the last person. And I just want to go back to the list and show you real quick. That when there's one person listed, Grady is the first and the last. So he's always going to get the accessories request under hardware. However, in the laptops category, Grady will be the first person and Patty will be the last person. And because we're using my even odd logic, it's going to somewhat evenly distribute them based on, you know, when the requests are coming in and all that. So it'll be one of those two people, right? Kind of splitting it up between them. All right. So back to our flow here. 
Now that we've set that variable for assigned to, we can update the original item that was created. So someone submits the power app, it creates the item, then we go back into the item since we had its ID number and we determined who should be assigned to that item. And all we do here is we update the assigned to field. So put your variable in the assigned to claims uh, or whatever your field is called, right? So we've got the claims in the claims field there. Now, uh, the last thing I threw on here is just a really quick email just back to the submitter saying, uh, hey, thank you for submitting the uh, ticket. We've got it and we're working on it. So that's not really important. All right, so let's go back and do a couple tests here. We're gonna submit another request and this time let's put in something for the network. So we're gonna say our network Wi-Fi is having some issues and we'll say the lunchroom uh, doesn't have Wi-Fi. Interesting. And then our description is, I can't surf the net while eating my sandwich. And we'll submit that. There we go. Now let's see who's responsible for network Wi-Fi. So I go back to my request categories list here, and I can see that under network Wi-Fi, it should be Nestor or Isaiah. So uh, according to my flow, even numbers will go to Nestor and odd numbers will go to Isaiah. So let's go look at our list and we can see that spotty connection, or sorry, lunchroom doesn't have Wi-Fi, went to Isaiah, and if I check my ID number, that's 17, so it's an odd number. Perfect, so Isaiah got the odd request. Now if I do another network Wi-Fi, we'll do network Wi-Fi, there we go. Testing, we'll just do a little quick one this time. We'll go back to our list. So this one, again, network Wi-Fi. This should go to Nestor since uh, it's an even number and Isaiah got the last one. So we'll go to our list again, and then we'll wait for that to show up here. Do a little refresh. Perfect, and testing test went to Nestor. So you can see how that can help evenly distribute work a little bit, or at least make it more likely that one person's not getting everything. And it lessens that need to have human intervention, right? Where someone comes in here and they have to set the priority and the status and the assigned to and a bunch of other stuff. We're making it a little bit easier simply by having one list that we're using our power apps on top of. So we're, we're pulling the categories and subcategories for our power apps. And then we're just managing one field here for who is responsible for each subcategory not going into Power Automate, not going into Power Apps, just having someone come here and do a little bit of maintenance from time to time when there's a new category or a change in responsibilities. So thanks for watching. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments.